Today in the band we've got the LC70 from Killer Body onto the new Mercury Sessie and this car is truly amazing. <laughs> So guys, today in the band we've got the LC70 from Killer Body onto the new Mercury Sessi. And this car is truly amazing. I am so in love with this car. You know, this car has got so many details. I just totally love it. But my love for this car came at a price. And that's all got to do with the build of the Sessi. So the build was quite challenging and I had to do some modifications to make everything work. So in this video I will show you what I have done to make everything work. So you can do the same and you can enjoy this car as much as I do. Before we start let me show you some details, so here is the interior guys, everything is movable so you can move the seats even backward and forward and even the headrest, so the steering wheel can be turned and even uh, by a servo so that's amazingly, just look at all the details and even this little compartment can be opened and here is the body guys and I want to show you something about this body, so this car has got opening doors you know but that's not, that's not very special, but look inside the door, so we've got a little handle and when you turn the handle you can move the windows up and down this is just amazing but now let's have a closer look at the chassis have you ever seen a chassis that looks like this you know i don't so this is truly amazing but let's start with the things that i've done to make the build more easy the first thing I want to mention are the length of the screws. So I found some small mistakes inside the manual where you should use some longer or some shorter screws. So just pay attention when you mount everything. If you have the feeling that it's too short or too long, just replace them with some other ones. Because you will have enough screws inside the kit. The second tip is about the electronics, so inside the manual it will tell you to mount all of the electronics in the front of the car, but there's not a lot of space inside there, but you will find some space behind the dashboard. So I have mounted my receiver inside there, but if you've got a low profile ESC you can even mount that one inside there. So I will tuck all of the wires inside the dashboard and I've mounted my ESC on top of my steering servo. So this is like the medium sized steering servo and everything will fit nicely. So in the engine I have used a 540 Hobbywing Searon X and this is just an amazing combination and as you can see everything will fit nicely Another small thing is when mounting the motor, inside the manual it will tell you to first mount the motor and then add the uh, engine cover, but that doesn't work. So you will, you will have to add the engine cover first and then tighten the screws. And you can remove this little part right over here just to see how the meshing is going on, so everything will be fine. When you are going to mount the wheels onto the wheel carriers, you've got 5 bolts to secure them. But the wheel carriers doesn't have a thread yet inside there, so mounting those is a bit tricky. What I suggest is to make a thread in advance. So I have mounted a small screw inside my drill and just pre-threaded them inside the wheel carriers. And then I have secured them with the 5 bolts and now it works flawlessly. These are fake dampeners and you will find 4 of those inside the car. So out of the box it had some rough edges around the, this little piece and therefore it couldn't move freely inside this tube. So therefore I suggest to use a little bit of sandpaper or something like that just to smooth those edges out and then when it moves freely then you can install it inside the car. Just a small thing, the manual will tell you to grease those, I suggest not to do that. So if you grease those and some sand will stick to it there, you know this cannot move freely anymore and therefore the suspension will not work as it should. Another tip I can give you is to grease all of the gears. So inside this car all the gears are made of metal and that's a good thing of course. But I didn't find a lot of grease and I'm using this grease to put on the metal gears. So I just opened the gearbox up and just greased everything and everything runs smoothly now. And I did the same thing with the pumpkins. And just pay special attention to the locking and the unlocking of the differential system right over there. Just make sure that there is some grease inside there. 
when we are talking about the differential lock, there's one tiny servo right over there which should lock and unlock the front and the rear axles. But in my opinion, one of the servos isn't strong enough, even if this is the recommended one by Killabody. So what I have done, I've added the second one. So I've got one uh, servo that locks the front and I've got one that locks the rear and now everything works flawlessly. So you can use two channels for example, so you have individual one or you can connect them to one channel, that's all up to you. And another small thing, just make sure that there's grease inside here to make the locking and unlocking more smoothly. In the front of the car you will find two tiny servos. So there's one over here and this one is for the high and the low speed. And there's one over there for the two wheel drive and the four wheel drive selection. But I had some problems with selecting the two wheel drive and the four wheel drive. So I have solved that. So over here you can see a little shaft that goes inside the gearbox. The shaft is connected or sorry this piece is connected with two little C clips. But the C clips were just rubbing against the housing of the gearbox. So I just removed a little bit of material over here and now everything go smoothly. The front suspension had too much sideward movement in my opinion. So what I did, I just added some little spacers, uh, spacers in between right over there and right over there. And I did it on both sides. So there's one bolt that goes all the way through here. And just the spacers are going in between this little plastic part and between the iron part. And now everything is very secured. Another thing I heard on the internet is the space of the battery compartment. So a lot of you don't have got batteries that fit inside there, but I luckily have two that will fit. So I will try to find those online and if I find them I will put the link down below so you can buy those for yourself, you know. This is just a very small tip. So guys, I hope I've helped you to sort some things out, because when you do, this is truly an amazing car. So this is not a real performer car, but it isn't built to be. This is the all about the looks, and this thing really looks amazing in my opinion. So the love for this car came at the price, you know, I have to play around some with some things. But when you figure out everything, then this is just an amazing car. If you are a beginner, don't buy this one. This is not a beginner of a car. But if you have some experience with building models like this one, then this is definitely worth the money all right guys thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel if you got any questions or suggestions leave a comment below and i will see you in the next video bye bye